We begin today's message with the end of our psalm for today. So let us pray as we prepare for the word preached. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For the beauty of the earth for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. God of all to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. It's normally praise that we think of um, when we think of God's creation. It seems like all of our hymns um, lift up praise as the appropriate response to pondering the magnificence of all that God has created, of the natural world. But that's not what the psalmist did today, is it? No, in our reading for today, um, the first half of the psalm is this, is this stirring poem about the majesty of God's creation. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament, the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. The heavens, God is set as a tent for the sun. It's rising is from the ends of the heaven and its circuit to the end of them and nothing is hidden from its heat. Oh, the glory of creation, particularly what we see in the sky. We would expect then for that to follow with praise be to God, right? Thanksgiving for all of God's creation. But no, the psalmist follows that with the law of the Lord is perfect. What? <laughs> How did we go from this stirring poem about creation and all that God has made to the law? It seems like a pretty far leap to me. Or is it? Or is it? What is it about creation? that affirms that the law is perfect. Let's begin by thinking about the law. We find in the Old Testament, of course, um, what we mentioned earlier in worship, the top ten, right? Ten commandments, which most of us do know. They're pretty self-explanatory. Don't kill each other. Don't steal things from each other. Don't covet. Don't be envious of what other people have. Honor your parents. Honor God. Basically, <laughs> you know, don't, um, don't do these big things that really get us into trouble. But then beyond that, we find throughout Hebrew scripture actually hundreds of laws. There are hundreds of precepts throughout all of the Old Testament. Specific ways of living, specific ways of treating each other and of being in relationship with God. It's no wonder then when Jesus was teaching in the temple that, um, that someone asked him, teacher, what is the greatest of all of these laws? <laughs> it's no wonder that he wanted um, crib notes for the test, right? I just want you to boil it down. <laughs> just take all of those hundreds of laws and tell me what the most important thing is. Jesus did this really um, clever thing. He took the essence of all of the laws and summed them up in two in just two statements. First, love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole strength. Love God with absolutely everything you've got. 
And of course, if we're thinking about what it means to love God and what it means to be in relationship with God, then we should have this list in our head of what follows from that. Being merciful, making peace, ensuring justice, being kind, loving our neighbor. And that's where Jesus followed up because sometimes, sometimes people don't quite get that loving God means loving other people too. And so Jesus followed it in his summation with love your neighbor as yourself. It's a brilliant thing he did to take those hundreds of statements and boil them down into two, two um, simple themes. Love God with everything you have. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. But wait, <laughs> what, what does that have to do with creation? What does that have to do with this psalm that we're looking at today? What does that have to do with the law being perfect? I guess it really comes down to asking the question of who is our neighbor? When Jesus says to love your neighbor as yourself, is he only talking about human beings? Or is he talking about human beings and creation itself? Not only the animals and the fish and the birds, but the air itself, the water and the rocks and the trees. Is that, is that who he's including in our neighborhood as it is? Well, for people of faith, we can think back to the creation stories, these amazing, epic tales of how it is that people imagined the earth came into being. And we are given very clear instruction there in those stories that we are to have dominion over the earth. Sometimes I think people that having dominion means to dominate. But that is not true. Having dominion um, means to, to do what I talked about with the kids, to be good stewards of the earth. 